uh, from banning phase or from extra picking phase in a lot of these wildcard teams. So two of the champions that really stood out to me that have been very popular so far in the wildcard tournament are Evelyn uh, and Malphite. We've seen both of them and the jungle and then also a lot of Malphite top uh, with teleport. So it seems like the engage for a lot of these teams is very, very important. Evelyn would be the one um, flanking around to the side and starting to come in from the back. Well, Malphite just comes straight up the middle, and he is still on the board here. Yeah, and we've actually seen first pick Malphites as well, mm -hmm. which is a little... It, it's kind of opens as well. This is definitely where our fight's going to come from. But it's also, it's a fairly safe pick because you can build a lot of things around that. You can, you know, we've seen him in the jungle, we've seen him top lane, and we'll have to see what these teams decide to do. We've also seen a lot of vain bans uh, across <laughs> multiple teams. Nobody wants to give anybody that hyper carry. And the answer from Pain, just in the last game, looks so good. The Malphite plus Vi combination, if you're going to counter Vayne, then you just take two divers and blow her up. You can see they would save their ultimates to both use them on Vayne, and even if they didn't land them, which actually happened a couple times, <laughs> they were still able to get to that threat and eliminate her. Yeah, we also seen a Malphite Nocturne combo earlier. We'll see if they actually get yeah. locked in. The fact that Zack and Rankin sitting here leads me to believe that maybe moving away from that one. But Gaming Gear EU, a fairly safe pick. Zack arguably does everything Malphite does, but better. He's extremely strong champion right now. A lot of teams all over the world value him as a first pick, so it's no surprise there. Uh, he's very durable. He has a revive passive on top of all the healing that he does, and he does have that similar long-range yeah. engage to Malphite. Not quite as reliable because people can train themselves to look for that shadow, which will show up as soon as the Elastic Slingshot starts. But if you spend your whole game looking, you know, for, looking for a shadow under your feet, then you may miss out on something else. One of the things I do want to highlight about Gaming Gear uh, locking in the Zac first, in the very first match of the day, they actually first picked Zac. And during the remake, during different picks and bans, they actually yeah. lost that away. They, it was it was denied by their opponents. So they put a lot of uh, pressure and emphasis, and Deadly Brother himself was saying how important that pick is for them. Over on the other side, Renekton and Thresh locked in. Nothing crazy or exciting just yet. Yeah, so talking about, you know, not showing your hand, those are also very versatile picks here. But to go with the Zac, they've picked Jarvan and Orianna. Orianna now has two options to get a good shockwave off. Most important part with her are those delivery systems that everyone talks about for the balls. And those are very good frontline options because Jarvan can just single target, jump on anyone he wants, and then the shockwave will suck them back into that cataclysm so you can keep them stuck for even longer. The one thing we'll have to see how Gaming Gear wrap up their, comp their uh, composition is what AD carry they're going to put in there because you've got a fair amount of burst damage that Oriana, from Oriana that can come down, but the rest of it is a little bit more sustained damage over time, whereas Renekton and Ari a little bit more effective at getting damage down in a shorter space of time. Yeah, with the last two picks that they just locked in, they're looking for control. They aren't looking for one huge source of damage. They just have so much control over the battlefield right now. Sona, adding Sona and Ash is very similar to adding an Ash Zyra lane, um, it, except for the fact that Sona can also use, be used a bit more offensively with the flash crescendos. So if they want a team fight, they will get a team fight. An Ash arrow into a, a Zac or Jarvan follow up initiation with a shockwave is a very potent combo. So Lion right here, it's very good that they have their comfort picks, which are the Nautilus. Uh, for Hacker V2 and um, the Ari for the mid laner. Those are two very comfortable picks that they have used a lot and they can actually use those to pick people up. So they're going to be looking much more to split and, and deal with GG sort of in different areas of the map instead of coming up to those five or five. Outside of, outside of the death charge from Lion, their sort of engagement is very much based on landing a charm or a hook or... So yeah, they yeah, got two and, hooks there. And, and <laughs> that, that's really the, the, the only way they can pull it. What's it? Hook City, if, if I recall correctly, is what Elements uh, I coined that one as. But I mean, uh, uh, the onus is going to be on gaming get to control the tempo of fights. And mm -hmm. I imagine if they do get burst out, it's going to be that sort of favorable 5v4, 5v... 4v3, whatever situation that line are going to be looking for. Yeah, so line are going to be looking to get sort of the early start with their Caitlyn lane putting immediate pressure onto turrets. And then by keeping the rest of Gaming Gear spread out, they're going to try and take advantage of that Ari and Nautilus potential to pick people off in the side lanes. To do that, 
their ward control is going to have to be up there in their priorities. They're going to have to get either an early oracles or spread out a lot of wards of their own so that they can then see where gaming you gear place their wards. We'll have to keep very close eyes on the <laughs> early games of this particular one. Lion in particular, uh, you know, they came up against a heavy crowd control initiation combination earlier today when they played against Immunity and unfortunately they came off uh, the losing side of that matchup, but you learn more from losses than you do for victories. So we'll see how well they can handle this high utility, high crowd control composition that Gaming Gear has put together. Yeah, it seems like, you know, they're going to have... We might even see Ari split pushing here in the late game because she is such a great duelist and they really don't want to have to deal with all of that crowd control in an enclosed area. So the more they can spread it out, better for Lion. Well, we are about to jump into the game right now. It is, of course, Gaming Gear taking on Lion Gaming. That's Lithuania versus Mexico here in Cologne, Germany. Both of these teams desperate for a win, but Lion significantly more hungry as another loss could actually put them out of the tournament altogether. Right now, fairly defensive starts. We haven't seen too much crazy level one action. There has been a fair amount of Zyra in these games, and that'll dissuade you from any sort of pushes. Right now, Lion moving towards the river. Yeah, with the, the amount of uh, times that Jad's talked about level one invades against the Zyra, I think he's had some fairly bad experiences <laughs> walking into a bush and getting uh, those grasping roots on him. As an Udio player, I imagine it's particularly more yes. frustrating. <laughs> right now, the five-man lion, they're pushing forward. They get themselves a fairly deep ward on the backside of that red buff of Gaming Gear EU. That's obviously just going to let them know exactly as and when Alinea is moving through the jungle once he's picked up his red buff and he starts looking to set up some ganks. Now, with the early wards too, if you can get them deep enough, then you can also choose your lane matchups. Both teams right now seem to be just favoring the, uh, the old natural start. Here we'll have the AD carry and support bottom. And in 310, that's a little bit more important because the early dragons are a are a bit easier to take um, with the fact that the turrets up top are harder to answer with. Yeah, it's something that we definitely noticed during the course of Super Week in, in Europe at the very least that the average dragon, the average first dragon time had dropped significantly lower. We were seeing teams challenge between like 8 and 11 minutes where it used to be like 10 to 14 minutes. Yeah. We haven't seen too many early dragons here in the wildcard tournament just yet. So there's also an interesting stat with that. Since the 3.10 patch in the LCS, the games have actually only been about 30 seconds longer than before the patch, but the first turrets are taken two minutes and 30 seconds later. So it does have an effect on the early game, but it hasn't made um, the entire length of the game all that much more all that much different. So no, no significant change. What we are seeing is the straight up head-to-head -head matches as we've been talking about. Fairly slow passive starts from these teams and the one thing that has impressed me about a number of the uh, wildcard teams is their actual mechanical ability. We've been seeing some great CS numbers across the board. Yeah, so the landing phase is, uh, is very easy for, for most of these, uh, these wildcard players, but once we do start having the ganks come in, which we'll probably see here because both uh, junglers started on the bottom side of the map, and both of them are aware that there are no wards up in that top lane. Um, so they've been told, and they're actually pinging out the wards already um, by both of their mid laners here. So we'll have to see how well this works out. It does turn out that <laughs> both Hacker V2 and Alinea are hanging out in the mid lane. Uri and Mazarin are about to have a lot of trouble. They come, come in, the knock. The red buff is down. Mazarin's looking to get some DPS, but Alinea is charmed backwards and manages to use that dredge line to pull himself to safety. Hacker gets out cleanly. A little bit of trade early on. Beautiful counter gank right there. They don't get much of a win for it, just a slight damage trade advantage. But it really does go to show that as a jungler, the amount of information you have to keep track of, well, they're just going to keep on fighting here, break down a couple shields. And remember, that shield is so important for hackers' damage. The moment that it pops, that on hit is just going to be removed. And Alinea, he's hanging around. He's not afraid of Nautilus. The early levels, I guess, Jarvan, <laughs> a slightly better jeweler. He has effectively asserted his jungle dominance, and now he's going to be taking away the big race here from Hacker, which will slow him a tiny bit, but not anything significant. So the one thing that we are definitely seeing is, you know, the camera's picked it up a couple times, is that this Ash Sona lane is actually applying a little bit more auto attacks, a little bit more damage onto the Sia Nezul lane. 
And they do have very good early poke, but a flash hook lands. So they pull Deadly Brother back. He's forced to flash away. The death sentence misses, but Barry is not going to be enough to save him just yet. The damage over time tick goes up. Actually, guys, with Nerzul's Ignite getting the last tick of damage. And first blood on the board for Line Gaming. Love it when you see those Nautilus not hesitate to go with the risky flash hook and land it. He was rewarded with the risk that he took. Very good job by the rest of the team following up as well with the Thresh uh, burning both the Flash and Ignite, even though he missed the death sentence. First Blood, well deserved. It's not over yet, as you can see Alinea moving to the top lane. He's got that blue buff, if a knock-up lands, Borky could be in a little bit of trouble. He ghosts up, and he's running at a mile a minute, but here comes MBS. The knock-up does land, followed up by Jarvan, unfortunately not throwing him into the air. 270 HP is what needs to get burned through, slices through the wall, and gets out clean. Alinea decides Ooh. not to flash for that he one. He thought about doing it, but was not aware of uh, the enemy jungler's position, so good call not to waste his flash and go over after that one. But they did manage to get the ghost out of Porky, so at the end of the day, advantage Gaming Gear EU in terms of that gank, but they do need to make up a little bit of ground. Alineo is going to find Hacker V2, starts smacking him in the head as Hacker is too busy shopping and realizes he needs to get rid of that before he can run away. It was a good check though, because with that, uh, without that ghost that you're talking about, Renekton much more vulnerable to a repeat gank. And it's very, very common practice after you burn the summoner with your first round to just make a circle as a jungler and return to the same lane so that you can actually come out with a kill. That window of opportunity is going to be slightly less than if Porky was running flash, but for the time being, is at a little bit of risk as we are getting towards those level six stages of the game. So the potential for mid laners to get burst kills and top laners to actually start setting up fights is getting a little closer and a little more possible. Yeah, the, the trade-off between Flash and Ghost is, is always one that especially top laners and junglers debate for a long time. It's, it's very nice to have your summoner come back with a lower cooldown, that 210 for Ghost rather than 300 for Flash, but you do lack in the end game those surprise initiations and Renekton without a flash means that he will have to rely on getting his slice renewed into a dice by going through minions or through a tank to try and get to the back line. Uh, um, because Ghost is just, it doesn't have that surprise factor. Well, positioning for Borky going to be very, very key as this match goes later into the game. We're talking about the early game phase and how Lion really wanted to and needed to get themselves into an advantageous position. And as it stands, the numbers are close as far as CS is concerned. But a Hacker V2 flash hook was enough to secure line gaming the uh, first blood. Mazarin takes a charm to the face, and Yuri actually uses the Spirit Rush there to try to get a bit of extra poke down. That's actually a very nice win for Oriana. Ari without the Spirit Rush has greatly reduced threat. That means that not only will they, she not have to worry about the kill in the mid lane, but bottom lane doesn't have to worry about a roaming Ari. 99% of the time, our Ari without Spear Rush isn't going to roam down bottom for a kill. So we'll have to see how long it takes before Uri decides to roam, if at all. This bottom lane is definitely going in favor of Lion Gaming since that first bite was secured. And Sia, as well as Nerzul, are putting so much damage down into Deadly Brother. If a fight were to break out, Deadly Brother is at a big disadvantage thanks to that massive health, de health deficit between himself and Sia. Having a Sona there to heal you up is always extremely nice, though. And with both ADs running barrier, they can also effectively tower bait both of these champions. So they're going to come in with this red, so very nice timing here by GG. Yeah, and you actually noticed in the minimap that both NBS and Mazarin had left their respective lanes to, you know, cover that invade and, and set up the steal. So a little bit of map control and, and timing control here from Gaming Gear put themselves a little bit ahead of Lion, but a very, very slow start to this matchup. CS numbers a little lower than what we have seen, but we do see Hacker Another VT. gank from Hacker here coming in behind. Coming in from behind, Hook manages to catch Inspiro. Hacker tries to pull in Deadly Brothers. They turn their focus down onto Sona, forced to flash away. No crescendo available. Ace in the hole goes through. Not going to be enough. Inspiro does manage to get away with his life. Ooh, so Hacker initially went for Ash. And trying to get the immobilize from his first auto attack onto both champions. But that little bit of extra damage might have put, been put to better use on Sona there and been able to finish her off. Needless to say, though, they got the flash out of Sona, and she is indeed extremely squishy at this moment. Yeah, a little bit of greed, maybe, thinking that 
see how Nurzul had enough damage to close off the kill on Inspiro, but nevertheless, once again, summon a spell down, and we've seen Hacker V2 not hesitate on those flash hooks before, so we might see him coming down. And the one thing is going to be a little more difficult now that both Deadly Brother and Inspiro have their Enchanted Crystal Arrow and their Crescendos available, so continuing to chase through all of that insanely hard CC is going to be significantly more difficult for Lion Gaming. Yeah, we just saw there, Crystal Arrow, not only is it a good engage, but uh, can be used to save the life of your support as a disengage. We do see that Lion Gaming have got a very, very small 200 gold lead. We've seen a little bit more... I think we've seen more presence from Hacker V2 than we have from Alinea. The ganks from this Nautilus have been a lot more impactful. They've got more summoner spells, and barring one gank in the top lane by Alinea, he just, he's really been sticking to that jungle, but he hasn't got a noticeable CS advantage. He is uh, drawing a little bit behind on the ganks, and most of it is because of the bottom lane presence. As we see that, though, they're trying to remedy the situation with pink wards. It's just a little bit mistimed here as bottom lane is recalling. And they even ping back Nautilus because they suspect that there is a counter gank in the area. We'll have to see if this works out for Lion Gaming there. Sort of aware of it. They've got the information to work with, and it looks like they're oh, yeah. He's currently for baiting it. gaming gear. The on hit snare is going to hold Alinea in place. Dredgeline pulls him backwards for a second, and we do see Java go back in. Cataclysm comes down the crescendo, locks up Sia. Caitlyn is still so low, 50 HP, still alive. A flash forward from Deadly Brother plus one more auto attack. It's going to be enough damage for Jarvan to close out the kill. Now that Uri has joined the party, Spirit Rush is available. And we talked about how he does not roam without his ultimate. A fight is happening on two fronts as Deadly Brother is being focused down by. Yuri. He manages to secure a kill while in the background Mazarin's gonna close out the kill into Deadly Brother. Now the mid laners trading one for one in this bottom lane, but they're on opposite sides. They've traded position on the map. Alina is super, super low. If he gets caught by an open deception, there's a possibility Ooh. for more kills. Mazarin looks like he stopped the CS as he continues to auto attack down. Uri managing to secure the kill. Advantage gaming get EU. Lion bit a, off a little bit more than they could chew in that one. They set up that counter gank we were talking about, waiting for Jarvan, and they decided to try and focus him, but they're focusing the Jarvan, whereas GG are focusing the Caitlyn here. And the AD carry gonna go down much quicker. Great uh, Shona Crescendo right there to follow that one up. And they are actually able to even get Jarvan out alive because of the flash. Basically, the entire difference here in this counter gank was one team focusing the jungle tank and the other team focusing AD carry. And Sia was completely stun locked up there. Crystal Arrow into Crescendo. I think he got off one Piltover Peacemaker before finally being forced down. And now, all of a sudden, Gaming Gear EU, they turn the game in their favor, picking up, up three kills back to back to back, as well as only losing one. Two of those kills landed in Oriana's lap as well. So, Mazarin at the moment, he's got a CS advantage, he's got a Haunting Guys completed, and he's really going to be scary. Yeah, so that was the difference between running one of these uh, control-heavy duo lanes as opposed to the uh, attack damage-heavy ones. Yes, Caitlyn does have the slight CS advantage, but when you want to set up a gank in the bottom lane, Gaming Gear are going to have the huge advantage there. As we saw, the chaining CCs, Crystal Arrow into a Flash Crescendo, Extremely powerful. We'll have to see if they can continue to keep up that trend as we are hitting 12 and a half, 13 minutes on the clock. Dragon has not even been looked at by either of these teams and you have to feel that in the not too distant future, surely somebody's going to start thinking about it. Lion have got some good vision and we'll have to see what they decide. Well, it's going to depend a lot on how these fights down bottom turn out. If one team comes out significantly ahead, then we'll see it. Another arrow into Flash Crescendo. That's a three-man knocker from Alini as he joins the party. Cataclysm slam dunks here into a pancake on the floor. Deadly Brother is finally going to go down. Now it's support and jungler versus support and jungler. But it looks like Gaming Gear EU come out in an advantageous here. Two kills for one, but it looked a, a fairly close. It was, again, just locking the Caitlyn up. She has no cleanse, so there's no answer for a almost point-blank arrow there, you know, about half a screen. Pretty easy to land the very close-range arrows, and that's all that you need to be able to set up the Flash Crescendos. So they can easily change that one up, and, and they take out the Caitlyn first. I was just about to talk about the Dragon, though. They're going to need more than a two-for-one for either of these teams to actually have the confidence to tank the Dragon at this stage in the game. And that wasn't quite enough for Gaming Gear to actually decide and go for it. A clean fight with multiple kills is basically the modus operandi for either of these teams if they want to get towards that Dragon. One thing is that as far as damage is concerned, Sia has 
a big advantage. A BF Sword as well as that Cloak of Agility already completed. Whereas on the other side, Ash is sitting with just that pickaxe in his back pocket. It's, it's quite interesting to see how both of these teams are so heavily focused on shutting down their opponent's AD carry. See Porky is about to run into a little bit of trouble from Alinea. Knockup does come in. Red buff slow is there. We do see the stretching strike from MBS slowing him down further. Dominus gets he thrown out. He still has ghost, so he should be okay here. He does manage to ghost away. The least exciting gank I think we've seen in a long time. <laughs> they were able to finally get the ghost out of him, though. He was holding onto it, seeing if he would be able to escape without having to burn that cooldown. And by actually making him pop that, they open up the opportunity for a repeat gank here. And it does look like the repeat is in place. A flash into let's bounce. Now Porky has no ultimate, no ghost available. Down to 350 HP. Knockup's going to close it out. Alinea goes 303. Lion thinking about a dragon. Again, that's the circle that I just talked about where most junglers will put very immediate repeat ganks on the exact same area. Ash Arrow used defensively this time. Deadly Brother gets hooked in. He's pulled backwards. A brilliant flay coming out of Nerzul. Throws in Spro and Deadly Brother into the path of damage. Barrier comes out and that's going to be enough to keep Deadly Brother alive for the time being. Ace in the hole gets body blocked by Inspiro. No summoners left for this duo lane down bottom on Gaming Gear now. That was a very successful gank. But the fact that they don't have their... Um, Renekton up top means they are going to lose out on a lot of turret damage in the top lane while they go for the dragon. The Lion Gaming, they finally managed to set up that, you know, uh, superior gank and that team fight. Even though it didn't result in kills, it does allow them to pick up the dragon. Zach actually backed off from that top lane. Yeah, so even though this was the least successful gank down bottom, they didn't get any kills. They were able to burn the summoners and force the duo lane out. And since they just saw Jarvan top getting that kill on Porky, they knew that there was no way Jarvan was going to come in for that smite steal. So very good map awareness here from Lion. And they're able to capitalize on it, not only with the dragon, but also the bottom turret. So it's something that's going to at least balance out the gold values for Lion Gaming, as they were about two and a half, three thousand 3,000 gold behind before the dragon and before that tower has been secured. But with the first two global objectives in their back pocket, they're definitely going to be feeling a little bit more confident. However, Porky finds himself between a flubbery Spot a Jarvan and an Oriana. We'll see whether he's going to slice and dice oh, on the wall, no. but he's been cut off. This is a trifecta here from Gaming Gear EU. The slice went through, the dice follows. Knockup comes down from Alan Yo, the knockup from NBS not managing to land, but this has quickly turned into a massive fight. Let's bounce goes down. Nautilus is the first target. He manages to flash away to safety. Alina forced to escape. Hex drink a spell shield was popped. That kept him alive. The Ash Arrow oh, oh. lands onto Uri. He's going to get knocked up and just deleted from the mid lane. They spent so much time setting up that triangle to try and collapse onto Porky. I thought that it was going to be all for naught, but they're able to capitalize on that because Nautilus decides to go in with very low health as well. That was a nice shockwave on both of those targets, and only one of them was able to get out. The Ash Arrow from down bottom was just icing on the cake right there. Very nice shot from Deadly Brother. Incredibly cold icing on the cake, one might say. We do see Gaming Gear EU. They even up the towers one to one. They extend that gold lead back to two and a half thousand as it was a couple minutes ago. And it just feels like if Gaming Gear EU uh, feel like they can pick a fight and pick up kills, they're able to do it a little bit more effectively than that of Lion Gaming right now. Well, because that dragon was taken off the table by Lion utilizing the timing of the Jarvan Gang top and they're forcing the duo lane of Gaming Gear out bottom, that objective that Gaming Gear could use to force this giant AoE team fight that they're looking for is going to be delayed another six minutes. And it's actually opened up a window here for Lion to take advantage of the spread out nature of the map. Well, we'll have to see how these teams respond and if they want to, you know, really press the advantage and, and, and move down the lanes. Because as it stands, it does look like the lanes are still sticking for the most part where they have been all game. Nerzil has got a tiny cameo in this mid lane. And it does look like C is also going to be moving down. So Lion may be signaling their intentions. The mid tower might be the next point of call, the next focus for the Mexicans. Yeah, and the mid tower, tower for Lion is the one that's extremely low here. We do have Hacker getting caught out in the river once again, but there's so many members from Lion here to answer. It's actually... And Mazarin just gets popped. Yeah, Combo. it's actually Oriana that's in trouble. Another arrow does hit, but nobody's in the area to capitalize. Yeah, a little bit late on that arrow from Deadly Brother. Threw it out maybe as the fight started, but 
you know, Gaming Gear a little too spread, and all of a sudden, Lion Gaming with the numbers advantage jump on the mid tower. And that was all brought about by the great warding of Lion. Crescendo locks up every single member of Lion Gaming, but it's a three versus five at best. Finally, Deadly Brothers joined the party. First kill secured in favor of Sia and Lion Gaming. They pick up a second on the board to close the kill gap. Now, MBS is way behind enemy lines. He's taking on four members of Lion Gaming as Deadly Brothers spamming out the volley from the backside. What? Thresh, be careful! Sell the vision. Now we see Ad Thresh gets taken down by the volley and auto attacks as they turn their focus to Delhi brother pop the final blubber blobule whatever you want to call him and they have a great fight for line gaming so all members of Lion were extremely low right there somebody was going to have to go down to ash to be able to sacrifice themselves to get those two extra kills and it happened to be thresh just walking right into auto attack range now if we look at it from the beginning remember this is already after oriana's dead so it's a four on five engage from gaming gear and though it was a nice crescendo it wasn't enough because they didn't have their mid lane power here and lion were able to even take a few tower hits during this now let's watch again who's going to be the focus of ash here because Either Renekton or Thresh could go down, but Thresh is actually on the front lines. It only takes one auto attack to take him out. Very noble sacrifice, though, as it nets them two kills in response. Yeah, exactly Exactly what Lion Gaming needed to get themselves back into this matchup. They're falling a little bit further behind in gold, but the one thing is they didn't get the tower. And let's go back to the thing that started all of that was the Orianna walking into the river to try and catch Hacker. They thought they were going to pull off another one of those pincer ganks, but because of the amazing early warding of Lion that we talked about in Champion Select, they were actually able to not only pit, pull off a pick, but a very good uh, trap there that was able to bait in Gaming Gear, which basically ended in a very delayed ace. What you can see on the bottom of your, on the bottom right hand corner of the screen is all of those wards littered across the map for Lion Gaming, trying to emulate a Christmas tree as it were. There's so much vision down as Alinea he once again wants to come and play with Porky. Now Porky's been able to get away from most of the ganks. We'll see if he can do it this time around. Dominus once again. Ghost is not available as he gets knocked into the air by the Jarvan and Zack gets locked in with a Cataclysm. There's a lot of HP and uh, magic resistance to get through and Porky is able to just slice and dice away. That Spirit Visage is such a popular top lane item. And you can see right there because it's it avail it adds exactly every stat that most of these top laners are looking for. When he's going up against the magic damage champion like Zack, then the magic resistance is perfect for his laning phase, and he actually heals a lot from his Q and his empowered Q during laning phase as well. So the extra 20% helps there. And the cooldown reduction, amazing on everybody! Crescendo manages to lock up Ari, but it's not going to be enough to save his life. In the background, Sia comes in, lands the auto attack and a pult over to pick up yet another kill. With the support down from Gaming Gear EU, the timing and the vision, Lion are going to be able to pick up this dragon. So it's Lion that are trying to go for this, another dragon here, and they're able to get it. But Gaming Gear did not hesitate to move everyone top. So they're trying to answer that with a turret take of their own. And it doesn't look like Lion are going to let this one stand. And they've got a three-man stack in the mid lane. They're going to try to push the mid, uh, mid tower down, and they should be able to pick it up. We do see some members of Gaming Gear recalling as Sia and Uri continue the pressure. This is actually really good mid-game calling by Lion right here. They're even able to stop the recall of Ari delaying, or of Ori delaying one more member here. It's buying Caitlyn a lot of alone time with this turret. Now there is an Ash Arrow available. You can see that NBS is sitting in the river, but he's about to get caught up by all the hooks. Manages to get a short little hop over the wall and gets to safety. So that was a dragon and two turrets for Lion. And just one turret uh, in response here for Gaming Gear. So an extremely, extremely well played uh, aftermath of the, of the kill right there for Lion. It looks like they're Mid-game decision-making has gotten a lot better very quickly. Interestingly, a lot of these picks and a lot of these fights and uh, uh, objectives that we've seen contested have all stemmed from river-based battles and that very mid lane. Now with all of those outer towers down with the exception of the top tower for Gaming Gear EU, the map is even more open and more prone to movement, invades and, it, you know, skirmishes. And with Ari just finishing her Deathfire Grasp, She's going to have a really good time in an open map right here. There's only one outer turret left, and that's the top one here for Gaming Gear. So she has a lot more area to roam around and look for that 100% burst on anybody that really isn't Jarvan or Zack. We'll have to see how well Porky can 
impact these team fights in addition to that burst damage of Uri because he's just finished himself off that ravenous Hydra. So he's already got a fairly good amount of area of effect damage with his ultimate and his abilities. And now he's just adding splash damage to his auto attacks. Inspro's been caught once Full again. Took. The charm doesn't manage to land. Inspro gets the flash to safety, but we do see Alenia joins the party. NBS comes in. The arrow whiffs going through every single member of Lion Gaming. Crescendo still available as the shockwave pulls two members of Lion together. This is a brilliant fight for Gaming Gear EU. They've secured three kills already. A double kill for Mazarin. A flash away from NBS to safety. The last auto attack and tick of Ignite gives a triple kill to Mazarin and they didn't even use Crescendo. That's the danger of fighting in these enclosed areas against this control squad that Gaming Gear have picked off. It was Nerzul overextending a little bit, trying to engage right there with half health. Yes, he landed a very good hook onto Sona, but it put him in a compromising situation and they were able to take him out almost before that even started. In terms of the crowd control, the arrow and the crescendo didn't even land or wasn't used respectively in gaming gear. They're going to secure themselves a Baron. They've got a 3,000 gold lead and a nice power position. Yeah, they didn't even have to use the crescendo here because of this shockwave that comes out. There's already the half-life threat that we talk about. Zack goes in perfectly. There's the ball delivery system. Nice shockwave onto two of them. And Nautilus is not able to tank up the three members of gaming gear. Whereas Orianus was able to burst down uh, Lion. And there was just no pressure on Deadly Brother at all. He stood in the back line, auto attacking at will. He never let Hacker V2 get close to him. And Porky simply, he, he couldn't make it through the, 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 the front line of uh, uh, Gaming Gear. So well played by GG in that particular engagement. They now have this, all of the region and statistics of Baron Buff to allow them to potentially push down lanes. But this is where Gaming Gear have faltered in all of the games we've spectated. As we break the 25 and the 30 minute mark, their mid-game decision making not quite as on point as what we've seen from Lion Gaming. So they're going to have to supplement that with more vision. As long as they can see where Lion are, then they, they should be able to avoid those pick uh, attempts and be able to use the Baron buff that they have to just push down one lane. And this. This uh, crowd control that they are bringing makes tower dives actually extremely easy for them because they can arrow you under turret and follow that up with the crescendo and having Zach tank a turret is a very, uh, is the optimal situation here as well. Especially with the immense amount of armor that MBS has already built up. Sunfire Cape as well as that uh, Warden's Mail already completed. You can see a heavy stack of games. Oh, Shirelia! We do see Ashes down in the bottom lane, though. Now MBS is charged up. He's bounced in. Shockwave is available. The ball is on MBS, and it Arrow! works! Arrow! Two misses. Shockwave goes wide, as well as the arrow, and Gaming Gear immediately peel away, saying, nope, don't want none of that. The thing is, even with burning both of those, they still have Crescendo and Let's Bounce. So they may not want to go 100% for that tower dive, but since Lion are a little bit out of position here, and there's a four on five. They actually are getting a lot of damage here. NBS just took so much damage from the root from Nautilus, a stun from Renekton as well as some tower hits. But at the end of the day, Gaming Gear pick up their fifth tower of the game and extend that gold lead a little further. Definitely making good use of this Baron buff here. And since the cooldown on Orianna's ult is so low with her blue buff plus Athene's Unholy Grail, that's actually going to be back up for the next team fight. So they won't even be missing that one. You see NBS once again positioning himself to the sideline gap. He's charging up the slingshot. He's thrown himself in. Shockwave is going to be available and manages oh to just pull CA in. And he is melted under the damage of Gaming Gear. They managed to pick up two quick back-to-back -back kills for Alan Yo, and it's not over yet. They've disregarded the inner turret to dive onto the inhibitor. It's still not finished as a knockup lands. It's a B2. Mazarin and Alan Yu <laughs> is going past the Nexus Toads. You cannot get deeper than that. The knockup comes into place. The Death Star laser not managing to pick up the kill in Alien, but that is four kills uncontested for Gaming Gear EU. They're now onto the inhibitor turret. You can see how confident Gaming Gear EU are diving all the way into the Nexus turret. And with good reason here. They're able to get an inhibitor off the back of that and they still have their Baron buff. There's not a lot of answer for Lion because they don't have the front or midline uh, defensive potential to peel for Sia. He doesn't get to do anything here. This Caitlyn's not putting out as much damage as this Ash because Caitlyn doesn't get a chance to do anything here. You can see the Zack into the Shockwave Orianna combo right there means she didn't even get to fire a single shot. Whereas Ash is on the back line, she's even tanking turrets and she's fine with it.
Basically, everybody on Line Gaming was saying, see ya, we wouldn't want to oh, be ya. Good one. <laughs> In terms of Gaming Gear EU, they finally pick up their first dragon of the game after 29 minutes. They simply haven't really contested for it, nor have they had the vision for it, to be very, very fair. But the one thing I did like about that fight, there was no hesitation. The minion uh -huh. line congered up to the tower, and NPS just instantly went in. They didn't wait a moment. It was a pretty, a pretty good uh, slingshot there to start things off. If, if we can have Zack initiate like that every time, then it's, it's, there's almost no option here for line. And that's why I talked about the tower dive being such a good option for gaming gear. They have so many answers and uh, so much control in that sort of confined area that there's not much for line to do except retreat into their base. And we saw them retreat as far as they could. Pass four sets of turrets into the fountain laser and still wasn't enough. So Gaming Gear right now have got themselves an 8,000 gold lead. And it's a position that they have had during the course of the games they played today already. However, it has taken them a fairly long period of time in order to put together these wins. Against Dark Passage in particular, it was way closer than I think they would have been comfortable for. And, you know, all the, the questions we had about their mid-game, they seem to have found an answer. Just commit. Like, just yeah. jump in. Everyone keeps talking about the, the lack of, of quality decision-making for gaming gear in the late game, but with early game like this, it's, it doesn't really matter. As long as they can tower dive, and as long as, they, you know, as long as they have Zack in that much control, then it makes their decision very, very easy. And they can just play aggressively, which is obviously how they're comfortable playing and the, the play style that they would much rather go to. And it is much closer to those kills per minute we were talking about from the Russian qualifier. 30 minutes into the game, we got 27 kills on the board. You can see that super minions in the mid lane and Sia looking to deal with those ones. MBS once again gets the ball. The shockwave oh! isn't going to be used. He lets bounces. They still haven't used it. We do see MBS completely zoning out every single member of Lion Gaming. The box goes down, but it's not the focus. Hacker V2's drop on the back line. The rest of Gaming Gear EU are trying to focus the towers. Now the minions are bashing away at us. Porky hits a flag to the head and command attack. Shockwave goes wide with command protect. Manages to keep Mazarin alive. A body blow <laughs> onto Deadly Bro. He saves himself, uh, saves Mazarin and goes down himself. They get the tower, but they're forced backwards. <laughs> Deadly brother, a true bro right there, willing to take the headshot at the cost of his own life. <laughs> He's face bombing. He was face bombing. <laughs> okay, so I wasn't quite sure he was going to go down. I don't one. think it was an intentional <laughs> death, but at the end of the day, Gaming Gear EU, they only lost one. They got two kills. They got themselves their eighth tower of the game. And with super minions and those additional HP minions in the other lanes, you have to feel it's just a matter of time until Gaming Gear EU stack up as a five man and try to end this game. Yeah, they pretty much just did that. They'll, and they'll have no problems returning because although they it wasn't as clean as they would want, you know, they used their, their Zack Initiate on Ari and even almost ended up taking out Ari, which is one of the most slippery champions in the game. They also still got another inhibitor turret. So there are two exposed inhibitors here and they still have control of the map. But with Baron respawning, Gaming Gear are now going to turn their attention to pick up their second Baron of the game. We talk about those open, those naked inhibitors. They haven't respawned in the mid lane just yet. So we do see Alenio is single-handedly forcing away Hacker V2. Oh, oh what a Hacker flash. flashes off the wall. Baron is still up. Who's going to pick it up? It manages Got to it. get taken. Lion secured that one. Now they have lost their jungler in reply, but the Baron was picked up. And this is how Gaming Gear managed to win the match earlier in the day. What a play from Hacker right there. Not only does he flash to escape the Cataclysm, get over the wall, but he's also into Baron and steals Baron by himself. Beautiful play for Lion, but they're gonna need more than that to hang on here. Yeah. Because like we said, two exposed inhibitors means they don't have a tower to fight with, and they're down a man because Nautilus has 15 more seconds left to respawn. But we do, uh, Gaming Gear managed to secure the top lane tower. Middle inhibitor should be respawning very, very soon. And you can see with super minions and a numbers advantage, Gaming Gear have now turned their focus to this bottom lane. There is a massive minion wave about to pull up, but as it stands, NBS is face tanking that turret with his ridiculous amount of armor. It does barely anything to him, and right now Gaming Gear are a little bit split up. Hackers back up, and they are able to chase Gaming Gear off the inhibitor temporarily. This has got to be Lion's time to go right here. Ash Arrow is not available just yet, Hacker. 
was forced backwards, was forced a little bit further away. This is a jungle job, and with the Umumu's Ghost Blade, keep that in mind. Come on, Protect goes down. He's rooted in place. The death sentence falls him backwards. The Cataclysm goes down. Alinea flashes out of it. Now the inhibitor still standing as they turn their focus to Mazarin. A crescendo locks him up, and that's a three-man shockwave. Pulls everybody together, but Sia is untouched in the background. Deadly Brothers trying to get onto him. They're trading auto attacks, and as it stands, AD carry and AD carry is still alive. The only victim of the fight was Porky. Nobody down for Gaming Gear, plus they got the inhibitor. That is a terrible sign for Lion because they were barrened up and that was their opportunity. They even got Jarvan down to half before the rest of Gaming Gear were able to turn around and output damage of their own, but it just wasn't enough. There are multiple initiations here for Gaming Gear. Even if they're delayed on the first arrow they and crescendo, they still have the Shockwave and Less Bounce, which are two amazing combos that they've been able to space out and control team fights for more than like 15 to 20 seconds. Yeah, the communication in terms of stacking those abilities has been very, very good for Gaming Gear EU. And I want to talk to you about uh, something that we've seen Mazarin doing again. He's picked himself up another Leandri's Torment on his Orianna. And I can sort of see that making sense considering how low your command attack works, but it's not a traditional Orianna item. It's not on uh, Orianna, but I do always enjoy having a Leandri's on some person in the late game because the per the percentage burn from uh, from max health is so effective in the late game. And since Orianna has area of effect spells, she is able to apply it to multiple people at the beginning of the fight because it's so easy for her to deliver her uh, shockwaves and other spells with the Zac and Jarvan diving in that it's some great early early fight damage that she gets. And we'll have to see how effectively Mazarin can make that stick because right now Super Minions in the top and the middle. There's a very, very big wave in the top lane. Keep your eyes on that. Hacker B2 manages to catch MBS and that's definitely not the person they wanted. Porker loses 50% oh, no. of his HP. He gets knocked into the air. Deadly Brother lands the last auto attack. Even with the death sentence landing on Ash, it's not enough for Lion Gaming. They've lost two members of this fight. Cataclysm goes down, instantly cancelled. Alan is not interested in the wall. Knocks up Hacker B2. Down on the left-hand side, Mazarin and Deadly Brother close out the kill into Sia. Four kills without reply. They get the inhibitor turret, they get the inhibitor, and Gaming Gear are looking to close the game. Congratulations to Gaming Gear. A very, very strong performance here. They've definitely got some of the other teams in the wild card. Yes. And this point in time, they managed to pick up their second victory of the of the tournament so far. Gaming Gear sitting two and one. Well, the Mexicans of Lion Gaming, unfortunately, 0-3. They only have one more chance to pick up a victory. That will be over on the B stream uh, uh, with us, actually, against Pain Gaming. That's a tough ask. Oh yeah, Pain has been looking very, very strong so far. Yet to drop a game. Congratulations once again to the Lithuanians of Gaming Gear EU. They are representing CIS. Of course, they did sweep that tournament in Moscow. 2-0 in the semis, 2-0 in the grand finals. And this game was a little bit more what we have been seeing from Gaming Gear EU. A bit more action-packed, not afraid to dive, not afraid to pick fights. I feel like you don't give them Zack because that's how they got their first win and they went right back to the first pick, Zach. It was a huge part of their combination to set up the other forms of CC that they were bringing to the table. It was also responsible for their loss. When Zach was taken away from them, they lost the game. You heard Deadly Brother talking about it, and you can see how this very aggressive team likes to tower dive, likes to be in your face, and maybe they could do it with Melfight if Zach's taken away. That's the other thing there. When you don't have the confidence in your late game decision making, having a Zac or a Malphite on your team makes it that much easier because you have the option to tower dive. Zac is such a great option for tanking those turrets. It's, it just complements.